السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ گڈ ایوننگ اینڈ گڈ آفٹرنون اکارڈنگ ٹو یور ٹائم زونس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر اکسا علی ون آف یور پارٹ ون مینٹورس فار دی ایم آر سی پی سی ایچ فرام دی پلیٹ فارم آف میٹ پر آن لائن آئی ویلکم یو آل اینڈ ایز آئی ہیو پرامس دیٹ آئی ول میک یو ویری شارٹ ویڈیو فار دا بیٹر انڈرسٹینڈنگ آف پرمنی فنکشن ٹیسٹ سو آئی تھنک دس جسٹ آؤٹ ویری ون تھنگ آئی وانٹ ٹو جسٹ میک یو انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ پلیز جسٹ ڈون رٹ اف آئی آل دیز تھنگس وٹ ایور یو آر اسٹڈنگ اور وٹ ایور یو آر سالونگ دی پاس ٹائم سیکیوز اور وٹ اینی تھنگ اباؤٹ دی ایگزام پلیز جسٹ ٹرائی ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اینڈ ہیو اے بیسک کانسیپٹ آف دا ٹاپک اینڈ دین اٹ ول بی ویری ایزی فار یو ٹو جسٹ گو ود اٹ ان دا ایگزام سو آئی تھنک لیٹس جسٹ اسٹارٹ ود اٹ فسٹ آف آل وی ٹاک اباؤٹ ہاؤ مینی ٹائپس آف دی لنگ فنکشن ٹیسٹ وی ہیو بیسکلی وی ہیو دی ٹو کیٹیگریز ون از دا اسپائرومیٹری اینڈ دا ادر ون از دا گیس ڈیلیوشن ہول باڈی پلیٹسموگرافی so these two things they measure different volumes uh, if we talk about the lungs the spirometry it measures the forced expiratory volume at the one second then forced vital capacity and then third is the fef 25 to 75 basically which is the forced expiratory flow at 25 to 75 percent so these three, three things are the one which you can measure with, with the spirometry but the uh, residual volume functional residual capacity and the total lung capacity you cannot measure with the spirometry this is there was also a question in the past papers in the past exams on this that what you can not what you cannot measure through the spirometry so these thing residual volume functional residual capacity and the total lung volume lung capacity you cannot measure through spirometry you have to go for the gas dilution and the whole body plethysmography so this is how you are going to uh, differentiate between these uh, two things so if we go to the uh what uh, when and now we will talk about what is spirometry basically <clears throat> spirometry it is a measure at uh, how much and how quickly air can be exhaled in a single blow from the lungs so air flow during the forced expiration is affected by the elastic recoil of the lung tissue resistance of the upper stream airways and the strength of the respiratory muscles so basically there are the two things elastic elasticity and the compliance of the lungs which are going to cause wh whether it is an obstructive pattern or whether it is an or uh, restrictive pattern and these are the two things which are going to you can say uh, determine the pattern of the uh, this spirometry so what is fe1 and what is fvc which we are talking about a lot a lot a lot but we don't know what are basically these things so here is the fev1 and here is the fvc if you see this graph and then there is the time you can see that in the seconds 1 2 3 4 and the 5 6 7 8 this is basically the seconds and this is the volume of the lung which is shown in the liters okay. so fe1 basically this is the forced expiratory volume in one second Uh, which you can inhale it it usually calculate the amount of the air that can person that can uh, that a person can force out of their lungs in one second while this is the maximum exhaling capacity of the uh, of our lungs it is basically the total volume of the lung of the air that can be exhaled during a maximal forced expiration like if i am taking a forced expiration and i am in uh, exhaling it like <sighs> now this is my total forced Uh, volume uh, for forced vital capacity but what i have exhaled in just one second of in just first one second that is <sighs> this this is at the first second this is what my forced expiratory volume is one this is at one second initial one second of this forced exhalation that is the forced ex expiratory volume and the total amount of the volume that i have exhaled during all this duration that usually around become like here uh, you can say uh, we talk about like this about four second then this is the total amount which i am uh, amount of there that my lungs are going to exhale and this is called as the forced vital capacity and at one second initial one second of this forced exhalation that was the forced expiratory volume at one second so this is how you know that what we are going to talk about like again and again and again that what is fe1 and what is fvc you should know you should have a basic concept what are these so what are the normal values in a normal individual fe1 uh, is greater than 80 percent fvc is also greater than 80 percent so both of these should be greater than 80% if we talking about the individual level but fe1 to fbc ratio the ratio this it should be greater than 70% in a normal individual 
we will talk about that when uh, we are going to interpret the uh, lung function test then there is another dlco which is called as a diffusion lung uh, capacity for the carbon monoxide or it is also called as the tf which is basically the transfer factor of the lung so um, in all of your exams they have written as it as a tf so it is also called as the tf which is called as a transfer factor or the another name is diffusion capacity of the lung for the carbon monoxide so what it does it you usually measures to assess the lungs ability to transfer the gas from the air sacs into the blood stream this is what uh, it does and why it is called as the uh, carbon monoxide because it has a greater greater affinity for the hemoglobin so we use carbon monoxide as uh, you can say uh, a factor uh, to understand to measure this capacity of the lungs uh, for the other gases like for the oxygen and the carbon dioxide so we use this gas it basically it's, it is a test in which we use this carbon monoxide so where, whatever the scenario comes or whatever the results come it we can correlate them with the with this assessment of the lungs ability to transfer the uh, gas from like uh, uh, air like oxygen from the air sacs into the blood stream so this is what you will see uh, written in your exam tf this is called as a transfer factor or it is also called as the diffusion lung capacity uh, of for the of the lung for the carbon monoxide so these three things basically uh, they will give you and along with that you will have a z scoring they will not uh, nowadays uh, you will see that in the past papers they have given like like 80% uh, or the 60% or this is the 70% they have also given the ratios but it was uh, it was like that because in the previously uh, we were using these things we were using these percentages but then the scientists or the researchers or whatever the pulmonologists these american and the british thoracic societies they think that this is not the uh, appropriate if we talk about the age about the race about the height or the weight of uh, a person about whom we are talking about these values they do not fit they vary according to the age according to the weight height and the race of the uh, that patient so uh, why don't we develop a score which will be according to all which we have, which we have uh, which we will develop according uh, by considering all of these things so they develop this z score which consider all of these like uh, their race their height their weight their all of the different variables in a person which can affect these functions this pyrometry or these lung functions they just incorporate it and and then they develop a scale which is called as the z score it has been like uh, uh has been started i can say that they are in use about like one to two years just they have just been started in the back like in from the last one to two years so that's why in the now it is in the new papers you are saying you are seeing these z scoring initially in the previous paper they were using these percentages but now they are being absolute and now z score has been incorporated so you will see the only z scores in your new exam uh, in your upcoming exam so you have it is very crucial to understand what is this z score so it is same for all of these fe1 fvc fe1 to fvc ratio and the dlc are the tf this is same this is from minus 1.64 to one plus 1.64 so what does it mean that this is the range which they have given a z score of less than minus 1.64 means that the result is below the low normal limit uh, it means it is decreased and if it is a uh, plus one point uh, above uh, plus 1.64 it means it is increased or it is above the normal upper limit so how we can see that uh, how we can interpret that this is very i am not liking it <laughs> which i have to erase all these things so how okay just how we are going to interpret this z scoring you just remember you just need to remember this graph this is the z score which is this is z score given basically uh, on this line so this is a normal distribution we have already talked about in the stats what is uh, a normal distribution pattern this is a bell shaped pattern so this is the z score given on this x axis and this is the 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 similarly 1 2 plus this uh, it means 1 plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 so we have talked about that minus 1.64 to plus 1.64 this is the normal z score so <clears throat> here if we talk about that this is minus 1 and this is appropriately minus 1.64 
and this is our low normal limit you can see here it is written as low normal limit if the if the values goes below it then we will say that the z score is de in decreasing trend which means the diffusion lung capacity or whatever fe1 or fec these are going to decrease this is decrease pattern and if it is going this is here 1. plus 1.645 which is shown as the upper normal limit among all these values that will be we will consider it as a normal but if it is it goes below the minus 1.64 then it will be decreased and if it goes beyond the plus 1.64 then it will be higher or it will be increased this is how you are going to interpret it, interpret this z score just consider this thing this picture in your mind and it will be very easy for you to interpret it and among 1 per minus 1.645 to plus 1.645 it is normal what if suppose it is given as the plus 1.1 so it will come just like here 1.1 so it will be a normal value so you need to understand what is normal what is decreased and what is uh, uh, increased so that you will be able to interpret it when we are going to talk about the <clears throat> so this is the uh, severity of this z-score basically uh, normal is greater than 1 point minus 1.64 which we already talked about that and uh, minus 1.65 to minus 2.5 it, it falls between these range then we will say that it is the mild severity and minus 2.51 to minus 4 it means moderate severity and if it is going beyond minus 1.4.1 uh, I think in one scenario they have even given minus 5.3 which means that it is is whatever it is tf it is diffusion lung capacity it is fvc or ratio it is in, in going into the category of very severe severe disease so this is how you are going to uh, see that whether it is a mild moderate or, uh, in this severe category so what is the rule for uh, interpreting this uh, basically uh, for the obstructive and the restrictive just consider what is obstructive pattern in which compliance is increased but the elasticity is decreased compliance means it can stretch it means when the air is going uh, we are inhaling the air and it's coming into our lungs our lungs can stretch and our lungs can expand so they can stretch they have just expand by uh, uh, inhaling all the air but when it comes to just uh, getting back to the normal shape we have expand uh, the lungs like this but what it's going to cause them to uh, came uh, to come just back to its normal shape that will be elasticity so in the obstructive pattern the elasticity it, it is decreased which means the lungs cannot recoil back so whatever air we have inhaled and it has expand the lungs it cannot get back because the lung elasticity is reduced they cannot get recoil so it means lungs can stretch but cannot recoil the air can come in but it cannot get air out this is that's why it is obstructive which means the lungs has been obstructive pattern they have expanded already but they cannot get back and what is the restrictive in each uh, compliance is decreased but elasticity is decreased which in, uh, is increased which means they cannot stretch whenever the lung is coming and we are going force inspiration we want to inhale more than normal uh, you can say the air but the our lung has a max minimum capacity which means compliance is decreased it is minimum if we talk about like that in this scoliosis patient or uh, uh, in which the lung have decreased capacity so they have they can they can inhale a minimum amount of the air so and whatever the uh, minimum amount of the air is coming only that minimum amount can go bad which means they cannot stretch they cannot uh, expand so they can inhale only a limited amount of the air but elasticity is increased which means they can recoil they can recoil back so less air is coming in and less air is coming out whatever you can can uh, make it to come in only that can go out otherwise so minimum is coming and the minimum but whatever minimum is coming that is only go going to leave the lungs and they can only going to uh, come out so this is how it is co called as a restrictive pattern so it is it means compliance is decreased they cannot expand here they have expand but they cannot go back to their normal shape so that's why it is an obstructive pattern and this is a restrictive pattern and uh, uh, the mixes in between them so 
the rule is that FE1 to FVC ratio is used to identify basically the expiratory airflow obstructions and the FE1 predicted percentage predicted is used to assess severity of the uh, air, airflow, uh, expiratory airflow obstruction. And FVC compared with uh, basically FVCs for the restrictive diseases and the FE1 to FVC ratio, uh, FE1 basically for the obstructive diseases. We have already talked about that. Uh, the expiratory of obstructive is basically person is unable to exhale quickly because the lungs cannot recoil back to their normal uh, shapes. So asthma, chronic bronchio, bronchio, uh, bronchitis, COPD, bronchitis, cystic fibrosis, and the foreign bodies, they are going to cause the obstructive pattern. If we talk about the cystic fibrosis, initially it is obstructive pattern but with the passage of time when the lung has been damaged there is fibrosis because of repeated and repeated infection and then scarring uh, then it will also have will have the restrictive component then it will become a mixed pattern obstructive plus restrictive pattern so don't confuse it that uh, cystic is obstructive or uh, restrictive it is basically initially it is um, an um, obstructive and with the passage of time it can become uh, restricted so it is basically with, uh, a mixed pattern so what you are we will talk about that in in a bit okay restrictive pattern restrictive we already know that and what is going to happen they are the pulmonary fibrosis in interstitial lung diseases which mean the lung capacity is already reduced because of the fibrosis are the weak inspiratory muscles are the rib deformity which has already made the lung volume very small so this is what the restrictive pattern is going to cause and the mixes will be in between. I have written here that this is cystic fibrosis. So this is what we, we need to concentrate that. What is the patterns we will see that. In obstructive, we know that uh, FE1 is the most important. FE1 will be greatly reduced. And the FVC, forced vital capacity, it will it is usually, usually normal. Or it can be reduced. But the FE1 will be more reduced as compared to FVC. FVC can, like mildly, you can say, variate and can decrease. But usually, usually, 90% cases, it is normal. And the FE1 is greatly reduced. And the ratio will also be greatly reduced. Because the upper uh, FE1 uh, is the going to be decreased. So it will be decreased the ratio. While in the restrictive, uh, the main component is FVC, which is going to reduce. It is It will be greatly, greatly reduced. And the FE1 can be normal and it can also be reduced. But FE, FVC will be more reduced as compared to the F, uh, FE1. And if we talk about the ratio, the ratio is usually normal. When it will be normal, if we talk about that FE1, this ratio. Okay, the, let me just remove it. Okay. Okay, so if we decrease FE1 and if we decrease FVC, it means both are going to reduce. So what will be the ratio? The ratio is going to be normal. It will be the same. Okay, it is not going to reduce. It is not going to decrease. As we talked about that in the restrictive pattern, the FE1 can be reduced and the FVC and can be normal. So if they are go both going to decrease, then the ratio can be normal. But if the it is uh, if fe1 is going to be decreased here if it is going to be normal sorry it is going to be normal and fevc is going to decrease so our denominator is going to be uh, going to be very very decreased and our uh, the nominator is going to be normal so it is going to increase the ratio so this is how you are going to uh, see, say that how it, this ratio can be, uh, you can say the normal or how it can be increased. So if we talk about uh, this, so the ratio can be normal or ratio can be increased because the FE1 can be normal or FE can, v, v, e, V1 can be uh, decreased. Yeah. So this is how the restrictive pattern in such the ratio can be normal and ratio can be increased. But if we talk about the mixed, then it can have the small lungs and they can also have an uh, unable to blow out quickly, which means the both obstructive and the restrictive pattern can be present there. So in this case, FE1E1 will be reduced, FBC can also be reduced and the ratio is also reduced along with that. So, <clears throat> how we are going to along with that what else we need to have uh, that is going to cause the trouble for you in your exam and i am seeing that students are arguing again and again they are unable to 
just okay why this is not happening because <laughs> okay first of all we will talk about these two things and then we will uh we, first we will establish that whether it is a obstructive pattern or whether it is an restrictive pattern and then uh, or it is a mixed and then we will see that what is the transfer factor or the diffusion lung capacity of for the uh, carbon monoxide and then we will definitely see well what disease in, in which category of the disease it is falling so first of all you have to see fe1 to fvc ratio whether it is a less than normal limit a low normal limit or not if it is uh, a normal as we talked about that then we will next see whether the forced vital capacity is uh low lower than the low normal limit or not it is decreased or not if it is not decreased which means everything is normal so it will be a normal spirometry but if it is it is decreased if yes then it will it is possible restriction we talked about that fe1 to febc ratio is normal in the restrictive pattern so we see that this ratio is normal which means it is not a degree uh, less than the low normal limit it is normal then if it is normal ratio first of all then we will see whether the fvc is decreased or not if it is decreased then it is possible restriction if it is not decreased then it means it is a normal spirometry but if this ratio is increased, which is the case of obstructive diseases. So if it is decreased, then next we will we know that FEE1 is already decreased because it is an obstructive pattern in case of the increased ratio. We will see why we are further seeing FWVC, that is the forced vital capacity, FVC. We are seeing to establish that whether it is a mixed pattern or it is an obstructive pattern. So we see that FE1 to FVC ratio is increased, which means that it is an obstructive pattern and FE1 FE is already reduced. Now we will see that FVC is reduced or not to establish whether it is a purely obstructive pattern or whether it is a mixed pattern. So if the FVC is normal, then we will say that it is a purely obstructive pattern. And if it is decreased, uh, it is lower than the normal limit, then we will say that it is a possible mixed pattern that uh, the obstructive along with along with restrictive pattern, it is having both components. And then we will see the positive bronchodilator response. Uh, usually we see that in the obstructive pattern. And if it is greater than, uh, we give them a bronchodilator and we see the response uh, after repeating the spirometry. If it is greater than 20%, then we see that it is a positive reversibility test and it confirms the obstructive pattern. So this is how uh, you are going to establish whether it's obstructive or the mixed pattern and as we know that for the restrictive pattern the ratio is usually usually normal and uh, when you normal then we will label it if it is if the ratio is normal then we will see that whether it is a normal pattern or whether it is a restrictive pattern and in that if the fvc is decreased then it will confirm that this is the possible restriction so this is how you are going to see uh First of all, whether it is an obstructive pattern or whether it is an restrictive pattern or whether it is a, uh, you can say the mixed pattern. And then we will see, we will go further. Now, now we have uh, see, seen, now we have established that it is an obstructive or restrictive pattern. And we will see, now we will see that what is its TF factor or what is its diffusion lung capacity for the carbon monoxide, whether it is normal, whether it is increased or whether it is decreased. First of all, we will talk about the obstructive patterns. So if in the obstructive pattern, we have mainly the asthma. So if, remember that if it is mild asthma, then it can be normal. If they have given an obstructive pattern and they have given you a normal DL, uh, diffusion lung capacity, it can be asthma, it, it will be more uh, mild. But further, you have to see what is the, uh, uh, you can say the severity of the FE1 and the FVC ratio, how much it is decreased, whether it is a mild, moderate or the severe category. And if it is in moderate to severe asthma, can have the, it has increased the uh, DLC, diffusion lung capacity. So they usually do not give, but if, I, if, if it's just I am telling you for the sake of if you uh, if there is only obstructive pattern 
and only option asma is fitting in uh, but they have given the normal dlco and uh, you are you are saying that it is obstructive and i don't have any other obstructive disease and how asthma can be have the normal uh, diffusion lung capacity so remember that the mild asthma can have the normal they use no, not can have they have normal uh, diffusion lung capacity and it is increased in moderate to severe asthma and by which pet diseases are the obstructive which are going to have the decreased diffusion lung capacity this is the emphysema bronchiectasis and the cystic fibrosis when it is initially a uh, cystic uh, obstructive pattern so they have the decreased diffusion lung capacity now we talk about the restrictive pattern so among the restrictive pattern um only two diseases uh, which are going to have the decreased dlc that is the interstitial lung disease and the pulmonary fibrosis wherever there is fibrosis there is scarring there is decreased small, uh, small lung volume they have the decreased uh, you can say the dl uh, dlc but there is restrictive pattern with normal uh, diffusion lung capacity. These are all the neuromuscular disorders. They are all going to have the normal uh, diffusion lung capacity. Why it is so? I don't want to go into the pathophysiology because it will make a very, very long video. So just remember that they are going to have the normal diffusion lung capacity. Any test wall disorders like kyphoscoliosis, if you have, also there is a question in the past papers in which they have given the kyphoscoliosis. If there is any chest wall abnormality or any pleural disorder uh, like pleural effusion, it can cause a normal diffusion lung capacity and along with severe obesity. Severe obesity is going to have the restrictive pattern along with normal diffusion lung capacity. Then we are going to talk about the normal lungs, normal spirometry, which does not have either obstructive or restrictive pattern. In such cases, the pulmonary hemorrhage will have the normal spirometry lung function test, but they will have the increased diffusion lung capacity. Pulmonary hemorrhage, polycythemia, exercise, and left to right cardiac shunts, they are all going to have the increased diffusion lung capacity. While the pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary embolism, and the anemia, they are all going to have the decreased diffusion lung capacity. So you need to remember this uh, table very, very, you can say, uh, with heart. And you have to remember it because without it, you will not be able to solve uh, the questions because they have given in all exams uh, the transfer factors for that. So now... Some, ex some uh, questions which you have sent me, I have asked you uh, so that I can interpret it for you. And uh, let's just go with it. Like, what are these things? So first of all, one thing we are going to talk about uh, initially is the FE1. It is 1.7 and the Z score is minus 3.5. Minus 3.5, which means that it is way beyond minus 1.645, which is our normal. So it is going be like this. This is minus 1.65. This is minus 1.65. If you remember that shape, bell-shaped, uh, which we talked about. So it means it is going beyond that. It is de in decreasing trend. So uh, Z-score is uh, uh, here. Fe1 is decreased. FBC is 2 and its uh, minus Z-score is minus 3.4. It is about around just in the same place. So it is minus 3.4. It means it is also decreased, which means Fe1 and FBC both are decreased. Why do we take the ratio? So it means it is not... Uh, obstructive pattern it is between some restrictive or some <coughs> sorry um, it is between some uh, restrictive or the mixed pattern but here if we see that the basically uh, if we take it if just for the sake of example we cannot take the ratio but if we see that if we take the ratio then this ratio is going to be the almost same it will be almost one which means the ratio is normal it is not decreased it is not increased because minus 3.4 minus 3.4 and 5 these are all the same values it means both are equally uh, they are decreasing so basically it it means it is a restrictive pattern and if we see the transfer factor along with that, that is the 2.3 and the z-score is plus 1.1. Plus 1.1 is that it is in the normal range because the upper normal limit is plus 1.6. So this is plus 1.6. So this is coming here between in the normal range, which means the, the transfer factor, the diffusion lung capacity is normal. Okay. So what diseases with the restrictive pattern have the normal... Uh, um, that is the uh, normal diffusion lung capacity. Uh, these were 
neuromuscular diseases and along with that the chest wall chest wall problems or the pleural disorders and if we talk about that emphysema is an obstructive pattern pulmonary hypertension going to be normal and uh, spirometry pcd that is it will uh, primary ciliary dyskinesia it will present with bronchiectasis which is also an obstructive lung disease and then foreign body is obstructive lung disease interstitial is restrictive but the uh, diffusion lung capacity is decreased in it then neuromuscular is the one which is having the normal dlc cystic fibrosis if we talk about they have decreased uh, lung capacity and and asthma as it is not obstructive pattern so if you are still confused between here <clears throat> like cystic fibrosis or the neuromuscular so remember that the cystic fibrosis have decreased diffusion lung capacity it cannot come here as it is normal diffusion lung capacity given here so this ratio i may be these are not the exact findings which they are on because it is a recall so we cannot say these are normal uh, you can say uh, i will say that exact uh, values they have given so but if we if we even if we take it because in the mixed mixed picture the ratio is also going to decrease and both of these are going to decrease but if we take the mixed picture none of the, uh, uh, all of these they are mixed they are either obstructive either restrictive ex except the cystic fibrosis but in the cystic fibrosis diffusion lung capacity is going to decrease and here it is going to be it is given normal so i will take it as a restrictive pattern with a normal uh, diffusion lung capacity and it will be a neuromuscular then uh, uh, further next one is the fe1 is 1.8 which is minus 3.3 which means it is also going to be in the decreasing trend so fe1 is decreased here and fvc is minus 0.4 which means it is coming here almost here minus one minus 0.4 which means it is uh, uh, falling in the normal range which means that the uh, obstructive pattern this is an obstructive pattern because uh, sorry so it will become an obstructive pattern fe1 is decreased but the fvc is the normal so this is going to be an obstructive pattern and its tf factor is minus 6 which is also normal so here minus 6 is also normal so obstructive pattern with normal uh that is the diffusion lung capacity we talked about that the mild asthma can have the normal diffusion lung capacity so here it is going to be an asthma then f third one is fe1 is my 1.4 and the z score is 3.4 which means 3 sorry 3.5 it is written i will take it as minus 3.5 i think it is a mistake because it is 1.7 so it is minus 3.5 so it will be minus 3.5 it means it is also decreased again fe1 and the fbc is uh, minus 3.6 it is also decreased so both of these are decreased so i will take it as a uh, we will say that as a restrictive pattern and then the TA factor is minus 5, minus 5.3, which is so, 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 so much decrease, severe, severe, severe decrease. So the uh, restrictive pattern along with very, very decreased diffusion lung capacity, only one thing that is the interstitial lung disease, which uh, comes here. So one first one is the neuromuscular disease, second one is the asthma, and the third one is the interstitial lung disease. So... I hope so. I am able to make you clear it, but it will be only clear if you will practice it again and again and remember all this value because without remembering these value and these diseases, whether they fall into the obstructive, restrictive or the uh, in the uh, uh, pattern and with normal diffusion, whatever, or the decreased diffusion or the high increased diffusion. Now, this is <clears throat> this is the, I think, previous one. So child with the cystic fibrosis become breathless and clear sputum lung functions done. So FVC is 1.96, which is predicted as 2.3 and the Z score is minus 1.64, which is normal. So you see that forced vital capacity Z score is minus 1.64, which is normal because we said that minus 1.645 is the normal load limit. So this is the normal and FE1 is Z score is minus 3.2. It is very, very decreased. So FE1 is decreased. FVC is normal. So it is going to be an obstructive pattern. So this is obstructive as it is written here. And other options are restricted with mild obstruction. No. Mixed. It is not mixed because the FVC is normal. It is straightforward obstructive pattern. Okay. Okay. Next jump to our next... Uh scenario 
Okay. Before we come, come to this scenario, I will like to uh, want you to just see that what is fractional exhaled nitric oxide. It is basically a marker of the airway inflammation and it is used in age 5 to 6 years of uh, 16 years because less than 5 years we don't go for the spirometry. Similarly, we don't go for the fractional exhaled nitric oxide. So it is considered in the age 5 to 16 years of age and what, what does it tell? It tells the how much airways are inflamed. So and when we consider to go for the fractional exhaled nitric oxide, if there is diagnostic uncertainty after initial assessment and they have either the normal spirometry or they have an obstructive spirometry but with a negative bronchodilator reversibility test. So uh, why we go for the this fractional exhaled nitric oxide to see it is possible that we go for the lung function test spirometry and it came out to be uh, normal but we, are, we have a very strong clinical suspicion that it is a, a case of the asthma. Then we go for it to see whether it is normal or it is greater, it is uh, positive. If it is positive, which it will it will confirm that there is airway inflammation and it will confirm your diagnosis. Or the spirometry show the obstructive pattern, but it is showing the negative bronchodilator response, which is basically uh, shows the asthma severity. So uh, when it, we will say that it is positive and it will be greater than 35 pp. <clears throat> this is its units. I don't remember it now. Uh, greater than 35 and then it will say that it is a positive test and uh, it there is a greater greater you can say the severity of the airway inflammation is present so this is what it tell, tells you when you are going to interpret the uh, your uh, uh, interpret in solving your questions so now come back to the previous one in which the same thing is given here it is written 14 year old girl complain of cough and shortness of breath for last 18 months so he she has cough and shortness of breath for last 18 months especially after exercise her gp prescribed her for betlamethasone 400 milligram daily long acting bronchodilator and the montelukast for a month with, with no improvement chest x-ray was normal her lung function test are uh, 84 percent from the predictive is the fe1 and fvc is in 90 percent from the predicted one so what does uh but exhale nitric oxide is greater than 120 pp what's our problem so it means it is very very highly highly uh increase from the 35 it is about 120 so what is the answer uh it is cystic fibrosis poor uh, cystic fibrosis uh are the primary ciliary dyskinesia uh, poor control asthma, anxiety induced hyperventilation, it is to, or tobacco smoking. We know that cystic fibrosis is an obstructive pattern and there is damage, damage, damage and there is pooling of the secretions and then scarring and basically the problem is that they cannot get out of the thick secretions which are going to pile up and then they uh, further if there is going to be an infection then it's going to cause inflammation. But child is otherwise well, chest x-ray is normal then it cannot be cystic fibrosis. Similarly, it cannot be primary ciliary dyskinesia because there is bronchiectasis in that. Anxiety induced hyperventilation do not cause the inflammation in your lungs and the tobacco smoking can cause but it does not cause to that much level of the uh, inflammation in your airways which means that it is a poorly controlled asthma which only option that is left with that and uh, we know that there is inflammation in the asthma and there is a high high because it is a very very high positive test from the if we take the limit 35 as a normal in children which we already talked about that it is 120 ppb so it is a very very high case of the inflammation airway inflammation and it will be only possible in the poorly controlled asthma so according to me this is the answer that is the poorly controlled asthma if someone have some other thing to add they can add i i truly uh, just accept it if i am not uh, that much in the i am not in the right direction so let's talk about another example okay 15 years old child with cystic fibrosis controlled on his medication. Afibril, chest clear, normal air entry. Okay, what is it? Uh, FE1 is uh, ratio is 1.36 and the predicted is 2.202 and the score is minus 3.2, which means very, very decreased FE1. And the FVC Z scoring is minus 1.62, which means it is no, uh, minus 1.64. It is... Uh, almost almost we can say the normal because if we predicted score is 2.2 how you can say that here 
if uh, because in such cases in which the predictive scoring is given we have to consider them also so if we see is 1.96 and its predictive scoring is 2.02 uh, .02. so how you are going to calculate how you will be given a paper and a pencil also in the exam so you can easily calculate it what you need to do that you need to multiply 1.96 okay you need to multiply it with 1.96 you need to multiply it with 100 and you have to uh, divide it with 2.02 .02, which is the predicted one that is 2.02 so predictic means ki for this age for this height for this weight this is the normal one and uh, you you should uh, consider that whether it is a normal art so if we, if uh, so this uh, came out to be about 97% which means the FVC is very, very normal. And if you also see that here, FVC is 1.96 and the predicted is 2.02, which means it is very close to it. It is going to be normal. But if we talk about the FE1, its predicted is 2.02 and its FE1 is 1.36. It is markedly reduced. And if we uh, consider one, if we can also make a ratio, uh, percentage of this also. FE1 is 1.36. Okay, it is very difficult to write down here and uh, multiply it by 100 and then divide it by its predictive score that is 2.02. Okay, 02. So 1.36 into 100 divided by 2.02, it came out to be about 60. 7% which means it is decreased from the 70% so it is basically obstructive pattern only fe1 is one decreased fvc is normal and so it is predominantly obstructive with no significant restrictive pattern so you need to consider all the aspects in if they basically i think this is the previous one uh, if they give you the predictive scoring then consider the predictive score because they have given uh, according to that age that height that uh, race you can say that this is again the same which we already talked about that in the first scenario now this is okay this is the last one because the video has already been very i think i don't know how much time has uh gone so this is i think also the same disease yeah this is also the same one neuromuscular and the asthma and the interstitial lung disease which we already talked about that you need to just practice now and uh, then i think i i hope so i am able to make you and just understand the basic concept of the restrictive obstructive mixed and the uh, according to the diffusion lung capacity you were mostly mostly confusing it when it it was uh, about the diffusion lung capacity or the transfer factor so i have given you the table in which it will be normal it which will be it will be decreased or it will be de increased you need to remember that and and then it will be very easy for you to just uh, you can say uh, go with it i think that uh, is that is uh, all thank you so much if you have uh, any question then uh, we can discuss it after uh, you see the video and if you still have any confusion then we can uh, go for it uh, in the groups thank you so much